Matthew 22, 32. Matthew 22, 32. Jesus said, I am the God of Abraham. God said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. It's in red letters, so Jesus was saying it. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Once you're dead, you might as well forget about it. If you ain't saved and you die that way, you might as well just forget about it and just take hell for it. Amen. But now turn me over in Luke chapter 12, verse 42, 47. Luke 12, 47. And that servant which knew, now I know he knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Then over in Amos chapter 4, verse 12, I'll just quote that to you. God said to Israel, said, prepare to meet thy God. That's pretty simple preaching. Prepare to meet thy God. Everybody in here is either prepared to meet him or you ain't. Heaven is a place prepared for prepared people. Hell is a place prepared for unprepared people. So if you're prepared, you've got a good place to go. If you ain't prepared, you're going to go to hell. Preacher might say a pretty poem, might have some pretty flowers. He might be very eloquent. But it ain't going to keep you out of hell. Funeral is a funeral. God's not a God of the dead, but a God of the living. You've got to get in today before it is too late. Let's pray. Uh, come to you in the name of Jesus. Bless the reading of the Word of God. I'm glad you said it. We believe it. And whether we believe it or not, it is settled in heaven. I pray God you bless every soul here today. May they examine themselves. Praise you said, when you take communion, let every man examine himself, whether it be in the faith or not. No, not your own self, except your bread for faith. God, I pray everybody here might search your hearts this morning and see if Jesus is in there. And Lord, if you ain't in there, knock on their door. That you might open up. You promise you come in. Oh, sweet Holy Ghost of God, meander through these pews, touch husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, children. God, I pray you be like old Jeremiah, be like old John the Baptist, like old Elijah, when you said there, he'll return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. God, bridge that generation gap today and pull families together and we'll praise you for it. And one here not saved, God save them. One needs reviving, God revive them. Lord, the healing needs to be healed. God, do something great and mighty and wonderful. May the signs and wonders increase true signs and wonders from God himself. Lord, may this service be a service of revival and resurrection. Not a deep, dark pit, but a glorious place called heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 They'll ask one day, he said, did Jesus go to hell? I said, sure did. It's in the Bible. He said, what did he go for? I said, to get the keys. (laughs) Amen. Jesus has the keys of death and of hell. In his vesture. He's got the key. When he looses it, no man can bind it. When he binds it, no man can loose it. When he opens it, no man can shut it. When he shuts it, no man can open it. You need to get in contact with the man who got the keys. Amen. Somebody said, Peter's got the keys. Well, we got the door. Yeah, that's right. Christ is the door. Let me show you a few things here very quickly. I, you done sung the hour away and prayed the hour away and talked the hour away and whatever, but uh, y'all bear with me. I'll try to preach in a hurry. You still got communion to come here in a little bit. I'll hit three little points here and I'll cut them short if I can. If I can't, we'll preach all day. Amen. Come on, brother. I want to preach on separation, but I want to preach on preparation for separation. I also be two in one bed, one taking one left. Two at the meal grinding, one taking one left. Two in the field, one taking one left. There's going to be a separation, a division. I can't make that division. I can't make that separation. But if Jesus comes, then what's God is going out, and then what ain't staying. If you ain't ready and you ain't prepared, you're going to be lost in eternity without God. If you're not prepared today, get prepared. You've got to be ready always for death. There's 150 people there, I reckon, today. There may be more, I can count it. But on your way home from church today, some pothead is high and crazy, get over that yellow line about four inches, you're about four inches from head-on collision of 
Some I ain't got no brains. Some drunk. Some wild crazy guy. All of a sudden, bam, and you're gone. You could be in hell in a twinkle of an eye from now. Not a day from now, not a month from now, but in a twinkle of an eye. Let me say a few things and I'll be done. Better be ready for death. Better be ready for death. This tabernacle you're living in is going to be dissolved. It's going to go back to the ground with decay. But the souls to God who gave it shall return to Him. And you are going to be judged to the left hand, to the right hand, among the righteous, among the unrighteous, among the holy, among the unholy. And that's where you'll be forever. There's no salvation after death. If you don't get Jesus before you die, you die lost. And the word lost. Think about being lost. Well, I'll get to the messenger here quick. If preparation is made, great result. If preparation is not made, terrible. Terrible results. And the possibility, first of all, of preparation is yours. It is possible for you to get prepared for eternity. What a promise is that? What a promise. If Jesus Christ himself stood here and said, I promise you, if you'll repent of your sins and put your faith in me, the Holy Ghost will do something in you and you'll be secure for eternity. Amen. Secure forever. But at the same time, he'd say to you, if you fail to repent, you fail to trust my blood for your salvation, you'll be eternally lost without God forever. You see, you can, it's a possibility that you could be saved today, you know. God provides examples for men. The light of nature. God created a bird to fly through the air. You can't do that. God created a worm to make little tunnels on the ground. Maybe you can keep your head away from a robin. And God made the fish to swim in the water. God made great whales. God made all kinds of animals. He made a mole that swims through the ground. God created different things for different environments. And he created you in his likeness, in his image. God loves you special. You're something special to God. Jesus didn't die for dogs, hogs, chickens. He died for sinners. He died for you. He died for me. He made a way for you to be prepared to meet the judgment of Almighty God. And if you stand before God, He's a justified by faith. Saved by grace, through faith. Forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. I'm glad my sins have been forgiven. I was an ugly guy a long time ago. Ain't too good looking now, but back then I was a bad dude. Bobby Carrico, when he went to a party, his wife told him, said, don't take nothing. When I went, some other said, don't take nothing. I left them pockets full. But the thing about this is, God loves old sinners of whom I'm chief said Paul. God made a brown cow to eat green grass, give white milk, yellow butter, blue cheese, and juicy steaks. He knows what he was doing when he created this thing. If you just open up your eyes and look around, God will show you that he's real. If you can deny the existence of God, you're a dummy. Over in the Psalms 14, 1, it says, the fool that said, by the way, tomorrow's food day, ate food day all day long. Yeah. Enjoy yourself tomorrow. Yeah. It says, the fool that said in his heart, there is no God. And right there, I got wrote down, fee, fee, fi, fi, fo, fo, fun. If you don't believe in God, you sure are dumb. <laughs> I'm telling you, God has given you everything you see to prove his existence. You're alive, so life's got to come from somewhere. Life. The mystery of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Somebody said, I'm a free agent. I said, yes, sir, so is the Holy Ghost. You can't bottle him up and sell him. You can't trick him. You can't try him. He's just real. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you know it. If you ain't got him, you know it. If he's a witness. He bears witness. He's real. And God will let you see that somebody, somewhere, somehow, has got the Holy Ghost. And you can get it. You can have it. He can get you and he can have you. It can be a relationship where one are together and you're born again by the Holy Ghost of God. I'm telling you, I'm glad God gives us some possibilities for preparation. The mystery of the Holy Ghost. 
But the Word of God is one of the greatest, greatest proofs that God loves you. If you don't have a King James Version Bible, you've been shortchanged. Just for one illustration, I ain't going to get on this. I've been on it all day for did. But the King James Version, or should I say the NIV Version, has 64,900 less words than this Bible. Amen. That didn't go over too good to them liberals. But the fact is, God's just God, and that's all God is. One time I went to a, a house for a purpose, and there's five girls at the table, and they was having a birthday party. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a boy, we invited girls to our party, and they invited boys to theirs. Well, here's a whole room full of girls at a birthday party. And I said, can I tell you girls a story? They said, oh, yes. And I tore that cross for them. Yeah. Heaven, hell, crucifixion, death, burial. And they said, oh. And then I had to say something about King James Virgin. And the mother jumped out and said, why just, why just a King James Virgin? And them girls dried up. Yeah. I had their attention. I could have got them right with God if she'd just keep her mouth shut. If she'd let me alone, them girls wouldn't be lesbians today. Amen. You hear what I'm telling you? It takes the word of God. Don't never tell a preacher to shut up. Say, preach, brother, preach, preach. But she killed the spirit just as dead as if you just shot her. Them girls went back to eating cake and kind, making fun, giggling, getting... Friend, I'm telling you, when God gets somebody's attention, don't you butt in. Amen. The Holy Ghost is one of the greatest proofs of possibility for preparation. I'm glad I'm prepared today. One time, a old doctor, old country doctor, great man, loved God. He had a wife. She lived kind of high up on the hogs and she was kind of uh, uh, married to a doctor and had money coming in. Well, the old doctor died. So she had no income. So she starts looking through his books and she found forgiven, too poor to pay. Forgiven, too poor to pay. Forgiven, too poor to pay. She takes the books to the lawyer. They go to the judge. And the judge, she wants to collect bills that was owed to her husband. And the doctor, uh, the lawyer looks at it and says, it's wrote in red here. Wrote in red here. Poor, too poor to pay, forgiven, forgiven, too poor to pay, forgiven. He said, ma'am, there's never not a court in the country that can collect the bills that's been forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm too poor to pay. Yeah. But I'm glad I'm forgiven. Amen. Thank God I'm forgiven. Amen. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't steal it. But God gave it to me as a free gift. Amen. I'm so glad I'm saved by the grace of God. Yes. Point number two, the possibility of neglect. You can neglect. The Bible says, how shall you escape the damnation of hell if you neglect so great salvation? What do you think they'd be worthy of trampling underfoot the Son of God? Do the spot the Spirit of grace and do the blood where they're sanctified, call it unholy fire. What do you expect God's going to do when you keep on shoving Jesus out, shoving the Bible out, shoving God out, and shoving preachers out? What do you think God's going to do? Say, well done, thou good and faithful. So, no, he's going to say, depart from me, you work for the next time ever, do you? I'm glad you're here this morning. And while you are, I'm going to load your wagon. <laughs> Forgiven too poor to pay. The fear of a soul. The second death in the lake of fire is the funeral of a soul. We can bury a body in the dirt, but your soul is going to go to hell. Are you listening? Have I said anything got your attention yet? Are you having fun yet? Why are you frowning then? Cheer up a little bit. We ain't lost. The possibility of neglect. It's possible for you to send away your day of grace. It's possible for you to go too far. Up in Niagara Falls, above the falls, there's a rock that scoots out real sharp. It's got point of no return painted on it. Nobody's ever been in that water and went past that point and got out. They go over. Friend, there's a point of no return for you. There's a point of no return for you. There's a point of no return for you. 
Will you go so far, you a donor? Yes, And the greatest preacher in the world can't preach your funeral and keep you out of hell. That's time for us to get right today while we can. Jesus died on the cross. It's Easter. He rose from the dead to give you a hope of preparation. If you neglect that preparation, if you neglect that hope, it's your fault. Suppose you got up this morning, I ain't going to brush my teeth. I ain't going to comb my hair. I ain't going to put on no breeches. I ain't going to wear no shirt. You better not come to church like that. <laughs> you better get prepared to meet God. Prepare to meet God. Amos 4 12. You've got to get prepared to meet God. We're living in a nation that's not prepared. The whole nation's gone after the perverts. They're going to own the place for sober. You know what God does to people who the sodomite that owns the city burns the city. Amen. That's in Genesis 19, if you'd like to check her out. Back to this. The second day, the horrors of hell, the habitation of dragons, the dungeon of devils. The condition of unprepared man is miserable. If you die without Christ unprepared to meet God, you're going to be miserable for eternity. There'll never be a moment of peace. Not one second of it. The condition of unpardoned man is miserable. He faces in intense pain. He fits, faces everlasting suffering. He faces the agony of remembering. The first thing Abraham said to the rich man in hell was this. Son, remember. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing the rich man in hell done wrong was called the wrong man father. But Abraham acknowledged him as son. But still in hell. He said, those down there can't come up here. Those up here can't come down there. He said, son, remember. While you was on earth, you had everything going your way. But you neglected God. You may have a good house, purple and fine linen, fire and sumptuousness, have a bank account. You may have the world on a watch chain. But if you lose your soul, what shall you give in exchange for your soul? He faces his agony of remembrance. I'm looking forward to the day when I can't remember my sins. I know they're forgiven. I know they're gone. But you still got a home hatred for me. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no fun thinking about those things. And I wish I could quit thinking about them. And one day I will. Yes. But those in hell never will. Yes. I said those in hell, they that were holy, let me holy still in heaven. They that were wicked, let me wicked forever. <laughs> they that were unholy, unrighteous, let me unrighteous forever. And they that were filthy, let me filthy still. Yeah. When you die, God don't change you after you die. Oh, you, the Bible says the tree falls, so shall it lie. Yeah. I read one uh, in a magazine uh, uh, back when we used to work in Parks and Recreation, the tree cut. Back then they didn't have cherry pickers and things. You had to climb in a saddle, you know, swing from one limb to the other. This one guy said, I'm going to take a shortcut and just saw the tree down and cut the limbs off when it falls. <laughs> well, about the time he got it cut just about right so it'd fall this way, a wind came, it fell that way. <laughs> and crushed his car. <laughs> when a tree falls... You better leave it alone. Yeah. Too late to turn around then. Yeah. Old Milburn Purdy, mm. a great grandpa of some of uh, uh, my family. Milburn Purdy was sawing a tree. And as he sawed it, the wind came and blew it off the stump and landed on his foot and crushed his foot. Just crushed his foot. Mm. Just, just crushed it. He went through several operations, pins and uh, plates and, and casts, and finally he, he, he wouldn't know he was ever hurt. But he cut the tree down, jumped off the stump, fell on his foot, and just crushed him. When you die, every which way you fall, that's the way you're going to lay. If you fall toward the north, the Bible said, you'll lay to the north. So if you fall and go to hell, that's exactly where you're going to be. Prepare to meet thy God. Make preparation. So when the Lord comes, you'll be prepared for his coming. He's coming. If he came today, he'd catch some of you lost as a goose. Lost. Like a ball in high weed. Lost. Your lifestyle and your testimony and your life is just outside the will of God. Face it. Face the truth. If you died, would you go to heaven or not? 
Easter's all about Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. Why did he die? Why was he buried? Why was he resurrected? To have you a gospel so you can Amen. believe and be saved. Amen. Great the salvation neglected. How shall you escape his neglect of Satan? How shall you escape the damnation of hell, the Bible says? Son, remember, a person who dies lost would be out of place in heaven. They'd be unfit for heaven. They wouldn't be holy. They wouldn't have the spirit. Friend, you've got to prepare to meet God. Prepare to meet thy God. Now, that's yeah. such a simple gospel. Yeah. Noah came to them and said, Yet 40 days, and them shall be overthrown. What a simple gospel. But oh, the leader of the king of Nineveh repented and made their best repent, and God spared them. But they had to repent. Well, well, that's the only gospel I preach you. Yet 40 days and Bethel shall be destroyed. You say, preach, you're crazy. If I was telling you the truth, I wouldn't be. If you didn't listen to me, you'd be crazy. Nineveh made a gospel out of those words. Yes, sir. He didn't have to go to seminary and seminar and write books. He just told them, yet 40 days and then it shall be overthrown. And the Holy Ghost, boom. And the king took off his crown, took off his robe, put on sackcloth, fell on his knees, and began to repent, tell him about it, everybody else to repent. It's got to be the Spirit of God dealing with you. He's out of, you'd be out of place if you died lost. You would not go to heaven. The unprepared man is unfit for heaven. Jesus told him, he said, you're not fit for the kingdom. Wow. Can you imagine Jesus looking you right in the face with tears running down his face and blood and sweat and tell you you're not fit for the kingdom? Oh, and I'll never hear that because the blood has made me worthy. Justified. Justified. It never done it. Justified by faith. Just saved by grace. I'm glad. Thank God I can tell you you have hope. You can be prepared and be ready to meet the Lord in time. I told Phil this week, we talking about, I said, if I drop dead right now, we had this man alive. I've been trying to get to heaven for 61 years. I ain't fixing to quit now. I'm going to make it. One day you get there, you'll see me. But I'll be glorified with a body like into Christ's glorious body. Oh, you won't hardly recognize me, but Bible said we know as we're known, so I guess you'll be able to recognize. But the fact is, God will make such a change. He already made a good change in me, and I like it. But he ain't done with me yet. Yeah. When he gets through about he's going to conform me into the image of Christ. Yes. Won't that be beautiful? Yes. Can you imagine Carrico looking like Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that'd be a miracle. <laughs> but the fact is, God can and God will and God does change people. And when he gets done with them, they look like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got a problem with this he or she stuff. I have a hard time calling the person bringing my mail the mail lady. But you can't call a mail man. They've got just like to book it up, you know, who, who children don't know what they are no more. But God does. If you had born a woman, he's going to judge you as a woman. Hallelujah, amen. Yeah. Preacher, this is Easter. Y'all be sweet. I'm trying to be. Come on. <laughs> the unprepared man or woman is in a hopeless state, lost forever. Yeah. Last point, I'm going to skip part of that right here and jump down here and tell you the last part of all. The possibility of preparation has glorious results. Yeah. Now remember, the possibility of preparation is yours. The possibility of the neglect is yours. But the preparation is a glorious result. If you're ready today, blessed your souls. Ecclesiastes 7 1 says this The day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. Hallelujah. When I was born, I was a little bitty fellow, you know, and everybody played, called me Sunny Boy and petted on me, played with me. Oh, I was so happy. Then Grandpa died. <coughs> then Grandma died. Then Uncle, Hon Uncle Ro Robert, Uncle Rob died. And Aunt, Aunt Mary died. And people kept on dying. And life wasn't good no more. 
And I started looking for a better place to live. And I found out there's a place where people don't never die. No more car wrecks, no more cancer, no more heart attacks. That's where I want to go. Woo! Glory to God, amen. When I was born, I was born into a world of trouble. When I got born again, I got born into a spiritual life of joy unspeakable and full of glory and peace that passes understanding. And when I drop dead, I'm going to wake up in the likeness of my Savior. Woo! <laughs> Better felt and told sometimes this day, but I sure enjoy telling it. Death is a happy event to the prepared man. If you drop dead right now and you're saved, you would go to heaven. You'd be with Jesus. Can you can't beat that. Hallelujah. The prepared man is in a happy condition. I might not be the happiest man in the world, but I'm the happiest man I know. <laughs> I ain't always been saved, but I'll never be lost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll wake up in beautiful scenes. <laughs> the crystal river, the walls of Jasper, the gates of pearl, the twelve foundations, our Chalcedony, our Chrysopolis, our Chrysolite, our Sardis, our Sardini, our Sapphire. And then we jump on down to the Jasper and Jason. Then comes the beryl and the emerald and amethyst and the topaz. Twelve glorious foundations under that beautiful city of God. Mm-hmm. And see the light of his face lights all heaven. I can see his eyes now in my mind as that light shoots out and hits that sea of glass made with thar. Runs all that crystal river out of the throne of God. Goes over that crystal rainbow, or emerald rainbow. Goes down through this foundation, that foundation, this foundation, that foundation, 12. And then all of a sudden, the walls of Jasper and the gates of pearl. And I'm telling you, we're not going to wire jewelry. We're going to live in it. Yeah. A place called heaven. All full of God's glory. And nothing unclean shall ever walk therein. No more devil. No more temptation. No more sin. No more flesh. No more pain. No more death. No more time. We're going to live with God in eternity. The Bible says in Isaiah 57, 15 says this. He, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. God lives in eternity. He's always been. He'll always be. Now I always will be with him. Time ends, but eternity does not. Oh, I'm so happy. Can I stand it? Endless bliss. Perfect peace. The Bible said, precious in the eyes of the Lord, death is the same. When one of his children dies, it's precious. Yeah. The angels come and carry him up to Abraham's bosom. Yeah. Yeah. In Luke 16, 9, 31, the rich man died and then hell lifted up his eyes. Yeah. But Lazarus died and the angels carried him to Abraham's yeah. bosom. Yeah. You either go up or you go down. Yeah. Yeah. When you die. I'm trying to hurry. Please don't quit on me. Pay attention. Blessed are they to have part in the first resurrection. I'm telling you, if your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to have a part in the first resurrection. For on such a second death, I have no power. I will not go to hell. I'm going to be in that first resurrection. We steps out on the eastern sky, Revelation 4, and says, come up here, and you know how I'm going to come up here. You're yeah. going to step out on the eastern sky and call me home. And that's where I've been wanting to be for 61 years. And I'm going to make it. I'm not suicidal. I don't want to go today, but I'm going to make it. He is ready and fit for higher service. I'd like for God to find something for me to do when I get to heaven. I don't want to just float around on a cloud and play a harp. I talked to a young dopehead one day and he said, there's no God, there's no hell. He said, if there was a heaven, who'd want to float around on a cloud and play a harp all the time? I said, man, don't you realize if you went to heaven, you'd be in the presence of Jesus? Forget the harp. Forget the cloud. 
It's all about Jesus. I would like to play one, though. But the fact is, it's all about Jesus. I want to go where he is. He said this. He's letting not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, be also me in my father's house, so many mansions. If I'm not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, where that I am married, maybe also. He wants me with him. And the Bible says, the absence of the body is to be present of the Lord. Let me show you something. Sister Pat, be a helper, please. God help us. Won't be none of that. Now watch this. The Bible said, "Be absent from the body, be present for the Lord." My mama died. To be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. She's with the Lord. Yep. Now, if I die, for me to be absent from the body, I'd be present with the Lord. Yep. So whoever's present with him, I'm present with him because I'm present with him. <laughs> and the Bible said, that son said, the Lord said, should send me heaven to shout, the voice of the trumpet, God said, sound, and the dead in Christ rise first, yep. and we which shall remain to come, Lord, shall be, changed, uh, shall be caught up to be with them. Yep. Yep. Not just him, yep. but them. Yep. Yep. The reason they're going to us because they love him. The reason I'm going to love him. But thank God because him, I'm going to be with them. Yeah. I'm going to see mommy again. Yeah. They picture you as a spoiled brat. I know it, but I love my mommy anyhow. Yeah. And you children, reverence your parents. One of the ten biggins says, honor thy father and thy mother. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to start looking forward to reunion with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If you die lost, you'll never see mama again. Unless mama died lost too. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Prepare to meet that God. Christ died to give you preparation. And if you neglect that, you'll go to hell. One better. We had a good time. He said, I can get used to this. In heaven, you'll never get used to it. You'll never wear it out and you'll never get enough of it. Heaven's a place where you just keep right on going out with God in yeah. eternity. World's without end, the Bible says. Yeah. We've only seen this earth, but God's got eternity to explore. Yes. Hey. He inhabits eternity. They're worried about going tomorrow. Oh, forget tomorrow. Just get on down yonder, peace. <laughs> well, anyway, the Bible talks about heavens of heaven. Now that's something, ain't it? Yes. Not just heaven, but heavens of uh, heavens. Yes. A whole bunch of them out there, ain't it? I ain't telling you there's life on some other planet. I ain't saying that, but I'm telling you there's other stuff out there we ain't seen yet. God's going to show us around. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Endless bliss. Blessed that have part of the first resurrection. Now the prepared man is my last little stuff here, so wake up. The prepared man or woman has the whole promise of God. Everything God promises you in this book, if you're prepared to meet him, you got it. He will not withhold any good thing from those who love him. I've just begun to be happy. hundred years from now, check me out. Boy, I'll really be shouting all over the place. God make you ready and fit. God puts you in harmony with celestial surroundings. He finds kindred spirits there. Heaven at home. John 14, 1 said, Not hard to be closed, believe in God, but also in me, for in my father's house of many mansions, but also would tell you, and it will go to prepare a place for you, where I am there you may be also. And then verse four, uh, 6 says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Got a lot of badness here this morning. Probably all of you been baptized. I hope it took. But if you didn't have Jesus, it didn't take. Philippians 3, 21 says, who shall change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious body? Can you imagine being in a body like unto Christ's glorious body? Won't that be something? There'll be nobody wanting somebody else's whatever they got. Nobody be chasing somebody else's wife. Nobody be stealing. 
Everybody have everything they need and want. Forever and forever. There's no greed, no covetousness, no jealousy, no evil, no strife, no malice in heaven. I want to say this and I'll be done. You will never be an angel. The Bible nowhere says you'll be an angel. The Bible doesn't say your mom will be one. We sing songs about that, which is good, but, but she'll never be an angel. But the Bible says you'll be as angels. You'll be like angels. You'll be equal to angels, but it never says you'll be one. Matter of fact, what we got, angels is our look into. They've never been in a body like yours, tempting every way and bombarded with the devil's crowd. No. But let me tell you this. When we get to heaven, you'll have no more suffering or sorrow or pain or cry. God will wipe all the tears in your eyes. By the way, the last moat in my eye will go away when you wipe away the last tear. All things are made new. Things are perfect in heaven. I'm going to create God communion. But listen to this. If you're not saved, we're going to sing a verse of an invitation. I'm inviting you to come and kneel yourself in an altar somewhere and get rid of your sin, repent of them, and he'll take them away. He'll forgive your sins. Yeah. Preacher, I ain't got none. Well, praise the Lord, pray for me. <laughs> Why don't you confess it? We've all sinned and come short, and we need to do some praying. Let's stand. Heaven will be worth it all. Amen. Heaven will be worth it all. Give up your snuff, chewing tobacco, and alcohol. God will be worth it all. He'll be worth it all. This world's not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And Jesus wants to save you. Come on now. Hurry up. Don't, don't hurry. Just come on. Prepare to meet thy God. Are you ready?